Hi, welcome to this week's uh, video tutorial. This week we are going to be looking at Inform. Inform is a tool that you can use to make a language that you can use to write interactive fiction. It's a slightly older format than the other things we've looked at in previous weeks, um, but it's quite interesting in the slightly different things it can do. There are two big differences in the way Inform works. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that you're, you're writing code the whole time, but the thing is that the code um, appears like natural language, so instead of being made up of slightly more strange or unusual words, it reads like normal text that you might write. And so the other difference is the way that a uh, player can interact with your game, and they do that by reading. Uh, like with the twine stories, so you read, you'll read a section of text. Um, but then instead of clicking on different options, the user has to type what they want to do. So it gives you a different kind of freedom and different ways of moving around the game. So one difference is that it can quickly feel quite open and immersive. Whereas in the twine story or the bitsy, it can feel like you're having to move to click from place to place. Um, in this, from what you might find in the pen and paper games, is that you're using a different kind of imaginary space, different fictional space to create different ways of a player moving around. So you have to use your imagination more. Um, but by doing that, it's, it opens you up to imagine bigger spaces. So for the video today, we're going to be working in the Inform app that you can download. There is a website that you can use to write it online if you're not able to download the app, and that works perfectly fine as well. The really great thing about the app though is that it comes with, um, so I have it open now. Um, so in the app, you have this pane on the left, which is where you write your text. And then on the right, you have this section um, which is another window with different options, but part of what you have is the documentation. And here you have a really, really helpful guide explaining all the different parts of the language. And on this side, you've got the recipe book, which is examples of how to use the different elements. Um, so you can quickly open up things, so place from descriptions. And you'll be presented with a bit of a description about how these things work and some text that you can try out straight away in your project to see, uh, see it happening. So before we start, let's have a look at an example. So we just copied this example in. Uh, we can see Night Sky is where it starts. That's going to be the title. And before we do anything, let's just click play. Okay, so we have our text here, we click play, and now on the right, we have the story um, as it's been built. So what happens is the, the program has kind of taken our code there, it's put it together, and it's built this game on the other side. So planetarium, that's the room starting in, Tranquil dark room and seeing the stars missed just up to the wall. So that's the opening text. So let's see what we can type. So in this short example, started in a room with a description, I typed look, the description was the same, I typed examine message, it read what was on the message, and then when I typed look again, the description of the room has changed a bit. Um, and we can see this happening over here, so we have a planetarium as a room. 
And then we have in these brackets, we've got a rule created. So if we've examined this in the message, that'll bring where it's supposed to be now. So we use that string as e. Otherwise, a trample dot green with a ceiling of stars, which is what we had the first time. Okay, so a really nice thing about inform is you can use these tabs kind of however you need to. Um, it's much more complicated than the previous ones we've looked at, so we're not going to go through and build the whole um, version of the garden game in quite the same way. I'm just going to go through um, a couple of small examples of different things you can do. Uh, part of what I'll do is I'll show you how some of the things you can expect players to be doing when they're using the, and some of the different ways you can start building things to happen. So, so when you start a project, normally it will load with a title already there. Um, so I've created this one. So this is this is good. This is showing us what happens when something goes wrong. So if you try and build the game and it's not happy with the rules, um, it will tell you here, and it will tell you what the problem is. Often when you have the problem, it is quite clear what you have to do to solve it. So here the problem is there doesn't seem to be any locations in the story, so there's nowhere for the player to begin. So let's add that in. The wrong is a rule. So when you're working with inform, different spaces are called rooms, and a player will be kind of in one room at a time, interacting with the objects um, and things in that room. And then from that room, you can move to other spaces. Um, you usually do this by using map directions, so like north, east, south, west, like we did um, when we were laying out the bits of game. So I'm going to say, if we visited the lawn already, it's really quite a boring part of the garden, despite being a fantastic place for a nap. Probably time to be going home. Otherwise, so this would be the first time we've been to the garden. Let's see if that runs. Okay, so from this rule that we've written here, this is the result we get. So you wake up suddenly, you must have been taking a nap again. You finish your gardening for the day, and it really is time to go home. So we know that's the first section of text that we, we requested. So if we type look. That's a basic command that means we're going to examine the room again, or look at the room again, and now we can see the text has changed. We can continue editing our story there, but it's not going to update here until we click go again. Um, so normally when I've finished testing there, I'll switch back to the documentation. Um, so yeah, one thing we can do here in the if you go to the index section of your location, so we can see at the moment we've got the, the lawn there, and we can see just the player is in there.
So at the moment we've got this garden, there obviously isn't anything the player can do. So let's have a look at the way things can be added into the garden. So let's say the red flower bed is in the lawn. So when we're introducing objects into the game, you can follow this simple format. Um, so you'll say what the object is, where it is, and then after that sentence, you can open up um, some quotation marks and type a description for the object. Okay, so what we have here is the introducing the object, saying where it is, and then the text that follows immediately is what's going to be played when the player is, in, is entering that space, uh, which is different to the description of the flower bed. So if we add here the description, so we can see we played it through, it's telling us that the flower bed's there and what it's like. Um, then if we type examine it's given us that. So some of the thing, other things we can do is we can type these directions, but it's saying we can't go that way because there isn't anything to go there. There isn't anything there. Um, so the lawn is the room. Let's now introduce another room. Let's say the maze garden is a room. Okay, so what we've done to introduce the next room is we've said the maze garden is east of the lawn. And because we've connected it to a previous room, we're assuming that it's going to be a room. Um, so now if we move east from here, we get to the maze garden. It says now this garden is more on the south. Now if we go west, we get back. To the lawn, go east, go west. To create a space is, is really quick, um, similar to Twine, how you're creating those different nodes. It, you can move quite easily from Twine into this in the way of thinking about it, but once you get started, um, you find that moving through in this way is quite exciting. Okay, so we've got another room Add it on there, and let's see. Okay, so what we've done here is we've added, um, we've added this room, this Dutch garden, which is south of the maze garden. So if we go back to index, let's have a look at how the map is looking. So we've got the lawn, the maze garden, the statue garden, and we're beginning to see here the objects that are in these places. And so in the statue garden, we made the old grey statue, but we've included this text. The old grey statue is an openable container in the statue garden. 
And here we can see it's a container. Um, but we haven't said that anything is in, in, in the statue. But as you can imagine, it is possible to do that. So in all the previous uh, examples that we've done, we've had this situation where the player is finding a key to open the gate to get out. So let's say a Is that in the statue? So uh, okay, so as we examine the statue, we discovered it. In the old gray statue, this is also the key. And can we take that? Take key taken. So now the player is carrying the key. If we type I, which stands for inventory, it's going to tell, tell us what the player is carrying. So now we we have this object that we can move around. Um, so we can go north back to the maze garden, and we could say drop the key. And the, the key is gone. So now, if we look around the maze garden, um, you can see the key is there, it's just on the floor where we dropped it. And if we go west back to the lawn, um, so now we've got a now that we, we've discovered that, we can also see that we have some problems that we. We have things like the red flower bed, which we can also take like it was a key. Um, so what we have to do to stop that kind of thing happening, I think we're going to say the red flower bed is silly. Okay, so we've changed some things around here. Um, so to get around this this problem we had where we could like, do ridiculous things like picking up the flower bed, we've turned the flower bed into scenery. So now if we're in the lawn and we look, um, it's not going to come up straight away, but if we do examine red flower bed, it should work. So now saying the red flower bed is beautiful. Um, but the way we've done it, we should have included some text in the main description of the room uh, saying that the flower bed's there, otherwise the player's never going to know. But let's see if we can take the flower bed. So now, because it's set as scenery, it's saying the flower bed is hard and portable. And so the other way of doing it, which is set up further down, is in the statue garden. So if we go to the maze garden and set a statue garden, now if we try and do take statue, it's saying you wish you could take it, but it's too heavy. So it's carrying out this, this rule here. But still, if we examine the statue, the key is in there. And we can still take the key. So here we, in this sentence here, we're saying the heavy iron gate is west of the lawn and east of the house. And so this is at the moment creating two things, it's creating this house, which would be a room, and also the heavy iron gate, which you'd assume is a room. But then in the next sentence, we're going to say the gate is a door. So Inform has the ability to create, to treat these in-between spaces as, as doors, so you don't have to so yeah, you can create different ways of moving between the rooms. Um, a door doesn't have to be a door, like here we're using it as a gate, which is very much a door, but it could also be something like a ladder or a staircase or a hole in the floor. The important thing is that it allows us to 
add on these other details. So we can say gate is lockable and locked. So Okay, so now we can see that the gate is showing up there. And if we try and open the gate, it seems to be locked. So we'll then so we'll then pick up the key, go back. So open gate doesn't isn't the right command, but if we say use key, so if we just ask it to unlock the gate, it's going to check if we have the key, which we do, and now the gate is open. At the moment, we're still in that room, in the lawn, but the gate is open, so we can go through it, go west to the house. And the house, we haven't set anything up. All we have is, is that we know the gate is there. So, as you can see, it's quite straightforward to quickly build up different spaces that you can move around. Um, we're probably going to end this example here. Um, it's definitely the, the most difficult thing that we've looked at through this series of videos. Um, but yeah, I really encourage you to have a look at it, have a play around with it. Um, anytime you get stuck with anything, the documentation on this side is, is really useful in setting things up. Um, it's probably also a good idea to play through some examples. Um, and we'll put some links to some good ones of those. Um, if you're using the online version, the Playfic website to write it, uh, there are loads of stories published on there that you can see. So yeah, the challenge with this one, the exercise would be to try and create um, a small game that's like a series of rooms, um, maybe just just different objects for the player to move through and examine. It doesn't have to be anything too complicated, um, but it's definitely a really interesting uh, tool to get your head around kind of exploring a different way of storytelling. So this is the last of the of the series of looking at different um, examples of software, uh, but we'll probably post one more of kind of like a, a final summary project and encouraging you to uh, put all the different things together. So yeah, thanks for watching as always. Um, Send in anything that you're working on to us, it'd be great to see it.